world is on the brink of disaster. A real and imminent threat hangs over all of humanity, the threat of self-destruction. The world's politicians and rulers are egotistic and aggressive, power-hungry and vain. Their desperate struggle for immediate supremacy when modern science and technology are rapidly changing the world could soon bring humankind to complete and total destruction. The world is changing, but we must preserve the planet for future generations. Therefore, we, scientists and engineers, representatives of the most advanced scientific fields, have come together to use our knowledge and technology to save our civilization. We cannot solve all of humanity's problems. We cannot make everyone become kind and tolerant. Our goal is merely to hold the world back from the brink of self-destruction before it's too late. To do this, we are planning a series of robust emergency measures, not ruling out the use of force. In these circumstances, the ends justifies the means. We hope for your understanding and assistance. Well then, Andrew, how'd you like the declaration? It's basically okay, but it could do with some more work. What about security? What about our safety? The last thing we need is for someone to decide to oppose us or come and search for us. And we have to emphasize more than violence is used if it only be used for the purpose of saving lives. We have no ambition of taking the power, but want to use our knowledge to help the humankind. All right, we'll polish it again and there will be lots more discussion. But then we're broadcasted on all TV stations simultaneously around the globe. That is something we know how to do. And don't worry about the secrecy. Nothing will be traceable. It'll all be encrypted. Nobody will come after us, and that would be too dangerous for them. Listen, we had a long talk about where to start. We have all this fantastic technology, and we selected just a couple of options from the many available. I'll explain what I mean. I'm gone. Mark is coming online. They just launched their supercomputer in the test mode. Hello. We named him or rather her Sevilla, and here she is, the beauty. And we made a human interface to streamline interactions. She can predict the development of any kind of project, political, social, technological, just about anything. I just want to remind you that she is still only working in test mode, and she costs a pretty penny, so we can have only about 20 minutes tops. Okay, let's not waste time. We're proposing the simplest and most efficient option to hold Earth back from the brink. To put it simply, we annihilate every individual who currently represents a direct danger to the preservation of civilization. We've got high precision weapons, smart bullets, missiles, Drones that can scan every millimeter of the planet, even underground. At any given moment, we can flick the switch and do away with all the terrorists, dictators and their armies, aggressors, oppressors and all the rest, along with their weapons caches. In a word, everything that poses a threat, this is violence in the name of good. We just leave the policemen their pistols. That's the way to do it. First, we offer an ultimatum. Offer them the chance to destroy their weapons and return to peace, conduct reforms and all the rest. The smart ones will comply, but those who refuse will be destroyed within the next two or three days. We're only to start by killing a few aggressors and all the rest will understand that it's simply better to comply with our demands than risk their lives. I'm not sure about it. It seems to me that that would create rivers of blood. Let's see what Sevilla says. One week after direct action is taken by the community of scientists resulting in the sudden deaths of the governments of certain countries and the leaders of extremist groups, people are still terrified. Society is divided, some welcome the elimination of horrific threats, the power of tyrants and the outrages of merciless terrorists, but the majority is stunned the event has sent many into a state of shock. The bloodshed is a new source of fear and horror. Harry, do you understand what happened? The bloodshed sends the shockwaves through the society, increasing the number of people who are hostile to us. Well, this is something my colleagues and I anticipated, so we do have a more humane option. We have the immense capabilities of the ray gun weapons. 
and gravitational annihilation weapons. You just point them at a person and the next moment they're vanished. One moment you aim at a target and the next moment he's gone completely. It's clean and complete. No blood, no mess, all decent and discreet. Let's see what happens next. In the first hours after action is taken, there is fear and confusion over the disappearance of masses of individuals, from soldiers to generals, mercenaries to leaders of extremist groups and the dictators of totalitarian countries. But the shock is gradually replaced by euphoria, the people are overjoyed, there is no more violence, no threats, everyone's rights and freedoms are restored. Splendid! Let's not rush to celebrate. We got rid of bad guys so far, so good. And now it doesn't matter how we did that. But what will state of play be a year down the road? Can Sevilla forecast that? A year later, the euphoria has gradually given way to more sober views of the world. The enlightened portions of the world population are pushing to implement reforms or working to create new civil society institutions, but some social strata, such as religious and political groups, are increasingly resentful. They all agree that they now have no authority figures and intellectual infighting has broken out. Freed from centralized authority, armies, and police forces, the population has split into clans and families. Most Western states have evacuated all nationals and consular staff present in countries now overrun by internecine wars. Weapons have vanished, and with them massive numbers of jobs. Unemployment and hunger are rife in many countries. The absence of political power has catastrophic results, including constant thieving and looting. Anyone engaged in terrorism, trafficking or drugs production has been deprived of their sources of income. Youth groups are instigating riots in European countries. Underground movements have appeared with the goal of taking control of power. Both options lead to the deadlock. And however much you explain your attentions to lay people, they will still be thrown into shock and terror. And people will start thinking that our scientific society is even worse than the dictators we eliminated. Well, sometimes we have to make unpopular choices. There's no way we can get by without violence. Listen, why do we have to kill anyone anyway? We can use the biology. There are certain virus strains that can be configured to attack certain individuals. Quietly and discreetly, we negotiate with dictators, warlords, uh, terrorists and generals. We tell them if they don't listen to us, they will suffer torturous pains. Of course, they won't listen. And then we show them what awaits for them and they will do what we ask. They'll conduct reforms, forgo the terror and violence, uh, the weapons of mass destruction, and so on and so forth. Well, Mark, what does Sevilla say to that? Let's see. There are rumors that the highest elite of various countries have suddenly fallen ill, and their relatives and loved ones are concerned for their health. Unexpectedly and almost simultaneously all the dictators in the world declare reforms, changes in economic policies, guaranteeing the freedom of speech, of movement, of information, and religion. In some countries, new constitutions are drafted. Political prisoners are released. Bans are introduced on the use of weapons of mass destruction. Local armed conflicts cease. Waves of terrorists throw down their arms and surrender. Some African countries whose leaders were particularly diabolic have taken the road to democracy and could achieve 15% growth for per capita incomes by the end of this year. People have found hope. Entire nations, with amazement and joy, are singing the praises of their leaders for choosing the path of progress and humanism, giving them freedom and democracy. There we go. You see? We can fix it all without killing anyone. It may be too early to declare victory. It all sounds too good to be true. Much can still change. Let's evaluate in one year's time. The reforms divided the countries where they were implemented. According to existing data, the majority of citizens were satisfied with the pre-reform condition of their countries. The changes were too painful for them, with the spin-off effect of a wave of suicides across the planet. Most leaders who found themselves racked by mysterious illnesses one year previously have stepped down from their positions of power of their own accord. Many of the survivors have immigrated, some illegally, to other countries. The heads of previously unknown left-wing extremist groups are now vying to fill the vacuum. 
After the citizens of some countries in Asia and Africa were given freedom of movement, the world was overrun by immigration, transplanting entire peoples there was still fear that their newly acquired rights and freedoms could be restricted even more roughly than before, and people strived to escape to more developed countries while they still had the chance. A dubious prospect. So the sun of freedom warms some, but burns others. Hmm. Looks like virus strains aren't going to help us either. Clearly it needs more thought. Mark, perhaps you and your programmers can have some worth ideas? Yes, our team does have some proposals, but we haven't had the time to consult with Sevilla. If we divide all the countries by the level of civilization in terms of human rights, democracy, freedom of movement, speech, religion, and so on, well, I mean, if we had the first, second, and third division and separated them using force fields, Harry, this one is up your street. That's it. No one can pass through a force field. It'll have special crossing points, and if a country advances in their development, they will pass into a higher division, and we will have our observers. They will make sure people do not degenerate as far as genocide and cannibalism. I wonder what that would look like. It seems that this could work for many people. Some societies just do not want any progress. They do not need the values of civilization when they have family and children, simple, natural lives. So let them live in their enclaves, in the society that they like. And if they want to develop, we will help them. The birth rate will also have to be controlled. But we agree that we will not be involved with social policies. Demographic aggression is a threat to all of humanity. The planet's resources are not infinite, so a code of behavior also has to be observed. I mean no more than two children per family, for example. The policy was successfully developed in China, and the world didn't end. In fact, the opposite is true. The national economy blossomed. It's not a bad option. I like it. But can you imagine the scandal it would create amongst our colleagues, students, academics, all of the progressive society? They're good people, our colleagues. They're always ready to take pity on others whenever they have a chance. They're trying to help feed the hungry, force civilization upon people, and they will reopen the borders. Still, let's ask Sevilla what she can tell us about this. Once all the countries of the world were isolated from each other, the birth rate in countries with a lower rating never ceased to grow, and as the people were fenced in by their borders and there was no chance of escape to more developed countries, these states simply imploded. Hunger, epidemics, violence, the fight for survival these are the new rulers of the poorest countries. Of course, the level of violence is off the charts, people are killing each other on the streets for a mouthful of bread. Dissidents fighting for justice are few and far between, they have been cut off from external assistance and they are being annihilated, one by one. The atmosphere of terror is becoming ever more palpable. In countries with the highest level of development, a wave of outrage is swelling, and academics, humanists, the creative classes and religious leaders are leading the debate. They declare that they are ready to travel to third world countries to bring humanitarian aid, food, and medicine, as well as concerts and exhibitions. Moreover, they turn to the governments of all developed countries with a demand to participate in the All Men Are Brothers movement, and open crossing points for everyone who wishes to immigrate to Europe. A petition appears in the press, signed by a colossal number of academics, calling for the force fields to be removed. I told you that option was doomed. It's a good plan, but it's the curse of all of our societies. We take a pity on scandalers and the cutthroats as soon as they end up in jail. The West is first to cave in. They start emphasizing with everyone, especially the children, but always forget about their own children. You know what? We still have a couple of aces up our sleeve. You've probably heard about the recent research on remote mind control. Well, those were not rumors. You can be sitting in Paris, for example, and control the consciousness of someone sitting in Bangladesh. Here we go. Now this is a total nightmare. We wanted to save humanity from destruction and preserve the freedoms and rights. And now you want to take away the freedoms and rights that they already have and take away their reason. And we'll be sitting around pushing buttons and the convenient herd will go wherever we choose. Do we have the moral right to do that? Are we gods now? Do we really know what is best for humanity? Harry, for heaven's sake, don't go overboard. Nobody's going to be controlling everyone on the planet. 
Anyway, that would be impossible. Harry, 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 let me finish. We also have a way of controlling the consciousness, and we can delete the gene of aggression. At least in those has tendency for terror and violence. And then the mass consciousness will go the way we want. But we can't turn people into puppets. That will make us no more than puppet masters. And why not? We can force them to gradually develop within the limits of mainline. Civilist development, teaching them to think creatively. And if the button falls into the wrong hands? Well, listen to this, Harry. When we invented an A-bomb, we never meant it to be controlled by everyone. There are special deployment protocols, administrations, and a hierarchy of decision makers. Just like here, the stricter, the better. If one country wants to attack another, for example, that is when we activate the button. And the leadership of the aggressor country says, whoa, let's not do that. We want to attack because we don't want that. And this can work at the lower level too. If a person picks up a machine gun, for example, something clicks in his brain and he ends up buying children ice cream instead. Let's not argue. We're running out of time. Shouldn't we instead see what Sevilla has to say about this? Some people are satisfied by the changes. Life has become quieter and hedonism is flourishing. But life is now similar to existence in a retirement home full of middle-class residents. They are comfortable, but have nothing to do. Everything is done for them by machines. Art has vanished. Sports no longer exist as people have no interest in competing with each other. Competitions, hobby clubs, and lotteries have all become a thing of the past, just like libraries and the institution of marriage. All kinds of relationships, personal and professional, are disintegrating, as more and more people slip into depression and apathy, losing the desires that once guided their lives. People are losing the will to live, forgetting the very meaning of life. The number of suicides rises. Humankind ceases to breed. Homo sapiens becomes extinct. Right. You know, it's interesting when people talk about the flow of time. You can imagine time as the river. The present is the bridge and we're standing on it. The past lies behind us. Ahead of us, we see waves rolling towards us from the future. We cannot exactly calculate what those waves will bring us because of the vast number of connections in the life of human society. But simply to keep the water in our river clean, we can forecast some general trends and work to manage them where necessary. Of course, the accuracy of forecast I think cannot be better than 70, 80 percent. That is an extremely high degree of prediction fidelity. Only superior intelligence can achieve 100% accuracy, but I do not yet have any connection with any such force. All my calculations suggest that if you do nothing, civilization will perish, and this in every scenario. So we must not just sit on our hands. Even if there's an easy solution, every challenge requires an adequate response. All problems are different, and they each require a unique solution. Much work lies ahead of us. Meanwhile, we can use all the options proposed. When we find a terrorist or a dictator, we infect him with the virus. If a person refuses to change, we delete his aggression gene. If he refuses to comply with the demands of civilization, then we separate him from society and let him have his dozen wives and multiply in isolation. I get it. In homeopathic doses and on a case-by-case -case basis, sometimes a moderate amount of violence sometimes a nudge to force reforms and control the birth rate. And occasionally, we apply a little bit of genetic pressure against psychopaths with influence. So most people will go on living their lives. But as soon as someone gets it into their heads to take the wrong path, a little voice will go on inside them, a little signal saying, this is taboo, do not do this. Today, we've taken the first step and now the problems have become more transparent. Now we can start to make changes. So let's get down to business. We have our work cut out for us. We cannot put it off any longer. Perhaps Sevilla has some words of wisdom? T, you are right that you have much work to do. But if you are successful, the rewards will be great indeed. The world will become a safer and happier place. <laughs>